Yo, what is poppin' people? My name is Out of Order. Welcome back to the channel. And I know editing can be pretty stressful, especially when stuff like this happens. I know why. I know why. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. And you're gonna you can see. Look, it's quarter quality now. Once it goes to full, it's gonna be visible. I told you! I told you! Fuck you, After Effects, you piece of sh Sorry, that was uncalled for. So in this video, guys, I'm gonna be showing you how to fix this really stupid program since I've been using After Effects for about seven years now. Because like I've said, guys, I'm too lazy to learn a whole nother program. So without wasting any more time, let's get right on into the video. So here we are in After Effects, guys. Now we're gonna be going over some common issues and some uncommon issues, and I'll be showing you how to fix each and every one of them. So this is the most common issue I get asked on a daily on Instagram and Twitter and Discord. And if you're not following me on there, you should probably go drop a follow because I'll be posting some crazy gas on there later but anyway guys this issue is why can't i import avi clips into after effects so as you guys can see i got some clips here now the reason i get asked this issue so often is because a lot of the clips i upload are in avi format and a lot of the clips you guys are editing are in avi so the easiest solution is that you don't have the right codec installed so if you want to install the codex make sure to click on the link in the description down below and you're gonna want to download the k-light codec pack now you can either get the full or mega however i recommend getting the mega and once you do that you should be able to import avi clips into to your After Effects. Now this does work, however, sometimes your AVI clips are gonna be extremely laggy or extremely slow to work with. So if that's the case, you're gonna wanna convert them into a better codec. So this is a method I use. I do this for pretty much every single clip I ever edit and that is using Virtual Dub. So what you're gonna wanna do is download Virtual Dub. I'll leave a link down in the description down below to Alan Gaming's tutorial where he covers Virtual Dub in more detail, but essentially Virtual Dub is gonna convert your video into a much better form of compression. So as you can see, if we go over here, I always use lagger with lossless codec i'll leave that down below as well once you do that all you got to do is press f7 save it anywhere and then you're pretty much good to go and now you have a new clip in a new format heads up though this is going to be extremely big in file size your video will probably be 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 gigabytes i've had clips be over in the hundreds of gigabytes so yeah it is going to be a big file size and if you don't want to bother with big file sizes you can just use handbrake which is another program which works pretty effectively at converting your clips into mkv or m4v which is a really good format to edit it as well. So those are three solutions to using an unsupported file type. So there's probably hundreds, thousands, if not millions of bugs in After Effects, and a lot of them happen for really stupid reasons, but I found that this one thing fixes almost every bug in this program. Now this is a really controversial thing because I know a lot of people are watching and are gonna be like, yo, what the hell? Why would you do that, bro? Now obviously if you turn off GPU acceleration, a lot of effects are gonna run a lot laggy or slower, but most of the time, I don't think it really affects performance too much since the performance in this program is already pretty terrible but to disable gpu acceleration you're going to want to go to the top go to file at the bottom go to project settings and then over here you're going to want to go from use gpu mercury acceleration and then just do software only now like i said some eyebrows might be raised because this is kind of like an iffy thing to do because obviously you're going to have slower performance here and there but i feel like gpu acceleration is just so buggy and it just causes so many random miscellaneous problems and if you want to take things even a step further you can also disable multi-core rendering i don't even have the option to disable multi-core rendering because I'm using an older version of After Effects. However, if you go to edit, go to preferences, and on preferences, if you go here to memory and performance, you have the option to disable multi-core rendering. Now, obviously, all this stuff is going to really slow down your program. However, you are going to see a lot more stability. With that all out of the way, guys, let's get on to render issues. So the first solution to fix your renders from crashing and failing is like I already said, make sure you use software only and not use Mercury GPU acceleration. The second solution I have, which also helps with renders crashing and failing is you want to go here to the top go to edit purge and then you want to purge all memory and disk cache now what this is going to do is just simply clear cache so all that green stuff on your timeline is going to go away and you're going to have to ram preview it again however if you do have some cache files that are buggy this will most likely fix the issue the third solution which is probably the weirdest solution on this entire video however i can definitely vouch that this does work more than you think is rendering in png sequences now this might sound really stupid because you're probably thinking like oh i just need a video format what the hell is wrong with you why would i do png sequences well i will vouch that it really does work so if you go here to your render settings you got all this stupid stuff here if you go down to output module most of the time you guys are exporting it in avi or some other weird format i don't know mov or something but if you simply just go to png sequence render it as a png and then render the audio afterwards and then use something like i don't know vegas pro or premiere or davinci or whatever editor you can simply just import the png images and then import the audio as well and then 
then just render into an mp4 or whatever. Now it sounds really stupid, I don't know why this works, but for some reason, PNG sequences just don't fail as much as other formats. And the next problem you have with render issues is probably caused by an effect you're using. For an example, something like RSMB. RSMB is probably the most pain in the ass effect to use. Now yeah, motion blur looks cool, yada yada. However, I always add my RSMB as the very last effect. What I'll do is, let's just say I got an edit here. We got some, I don't know, we got some adjustment layers, we got some solids over it, yada yada, whatever. Our edit's like that. Now what I usually do is I select everything on the timeline, so control A, then I right click, go to pre pose, move all attributes into new composition, then I add my RSMB preset, and once I have my RSMB on the pre-composition of everything, then I render it. If you put RSMB on an adjustment layer on a video, most of the time it's gonna be really weird and do some stupid stuff, so I always just pre-comp everything and then add the RSMB. Okay, so this next issue is very specific and rarely ever happens, however, it can be extremely annoying and frustrating when working. I tried to recreate it, however, I can't. So as you guys can see, I got this project file pulled up. Now, this happened on stream a few times. Like I said, I can't really recreate it. But for an example, your preview won't really update on the right quality. So as you can see, I have it at quarter. Now for an example, what would happen is, let's say the fog in the background is white on quarter. And then you go to full and then it looks completely different. Or for an example, you'll have maybe like red fog here for an example, but you go into inside the composition and then the fog is white or something like that. So basically your previews aren't really updating correctly. I don't think this will affect most people because it's extremely rare. However, to fix this, it's because of your color space. So if you click this button right here, you have different color depths to work with. So as you can see, we got it on 32. Now 32 is going to show a lot more color depth. Now most of the time, you're probably never going to need 32. It's only useful if you're doing renders in EXR or other formats like that. So for the majority of the time, you're not going to need 32. 16 will be just fine. And 8-bit, eh, I wouldn't really use 8-bit. But if your previews aren't updating, I recommend lowering it to 16 or 8-bit. The next issue is something that's really common, and that is basically saying like, oh, the resolution size is too big. You can't have 30,000 pixels. I'll show an error message of it on screen right now to show what I'm talking about. And the most common thing I see that causes this issue is that you have too much motion tile. Okay, I don't have a clip that has motion tile on it, but I do have a clip that has repeat tile. Now, what causes that issue is you either have these values way too high or you're using an effect like handy seamless transitions. Handy seamless transitions is a pretty hated or loved effect depending on who you ask, but for the most part, it doesn't really work on high resolution compositions. So if you're editing like 4K or maybe even 1440p, you're gonna get that issue. So if you're using motion tile, a simple fix is to just make your values not so high and just keep it to what's necessary. However, some of you guys might not even be using motion tile. Now this is caused by a bad combination of effects. So if you're using something like transform, warp, and S shake all at once on the single frame, you're gonna probably run into issues because you have the order wrong. From what I've been told, usually people will have transform, then shake on top, and then warp on top of everything. If you have warp on the bottom, or if you have the order of them screwed up, you're probably gonna get the issue about having 30,000 pixels is too much or something stupid like that. So yeah, for that solution, just have warp on top of everything. And the next issues we're gonna be talking about is camera tracking. So the most common issue I get with camera tracking is analysis solve failed. Now there are many reasons you can get the analysis solve failed error. And the main reasons I see that happening for people is simply put, your clip is just not really good for tracking. If you have really bad footage that's either really shaky or there's something obstructing your view, or if you're editing a video game and you have the HUD on screen, or if you have the little view model of the gun or whatever, just some obstruction, it's probably gonna fail at tracking. Another issue could be that you have too many dropped frames and a dropped frame is essentially just a duplicate frame or like a freeze frame. So if you have a lot of those in your clips, you're probably gonna get the air as well. And another issue you could get is that the composition size doesn't match. Now what causes this issue is extremely easy to fix. So let's say your clip is 1080p or something. And then you have a composition that it's in that is like 4K or something. Well, if that's the issue, you need to readjust your composition size or you could just take your clip, just drag it onto this icon and make a whole new composition and boom, it's gonna track fine without the composition errors. So the next category we're gonna be talking about is common issues and common fixes. Now these are some of the easier things you can do. So a common thing I hear people say is why doesn't my effect look good or it's being clipped or my effect is being cut. So for an example, I got some text right here. 
all it says is bruh. Now let's say for example, I want to add some S glow on this bruh. So if I type in S glow, as you can see, it's being really cut off here. It's not expanding outwards and overall it just looks really stupid. So another effect we can add is simply called grow bounds. So if I add grow bounds, drag it on top, boom, our glow is going to work perfectly fine and not be clipped or cut. Another thing I see people talking about is a single frame will crash their entire project and they don't really know what to do about it. So if that happens, the first thing you can do is render a PNG sequence to get to with the single frame that it crashes because a PNG sequence is going to keep generating single files of frames. So it's not going to be one video format. So you'll see exactly what frame it gets to. Or you can just check the logs of your After Effects or Media Encoder to see what frame is crashing on. But let's say you know what frame it is. So let's just say, for example, frame 301 is crashing the project file. All you got to do is turn on caps lock so your preview is not going to update. And now you can scrub through your entire project without having to worry about something crashing it. And then once you find out what is crashing it, all you got to do is just delete it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Another issue I see people talking about is with the BCC plugin. So let's say you download BCC and you want to try out the new effects. You add an effect to a solid or a video or whatever, and it's just a black screen. And you're wondering, you know, what the hell? Why is my effect a black screen? Now, this is probably because you're using a GTX 1650. Now, some plugins need more than two gigabytes of VRAM. So if you're using a graphics card that only has two gigabytes of VRAM, I'm sorry to say it, but you're pretty much screwed. I don't know the exact effect names that do this, and I don't really have a list of plugins that need more than two gigabytes of VRAM. But if a certain plugin is giving you errors or a black screen, make sure you have more than two gigabytes of VRAM. And if you don't, well... I'm sorry, you're pretty much screwed. Unless you get a new PC or a GPU. Now, this is an easy fix as well. So let's say you have your After Effects here and you somehow screwed up something. So let's just say uh, you move your composition over here. You move your footage like right here and your whole After Effects layout is completely screwed. All right, everything's disorganized. All your windows are all over the place. How the hell do you fix it? You go to the top, you go to workspace and then you reset to default saved workspace. And what that's gonna do is basically just reset all your windows and all that good stuff back to its default settings. And the last thing I'm gonna cover in this video, guys, is how do you make this program run faster? Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this program is pretty damn slow. It's very unoptimized. They always say, oh, we're making it faster. We added new multi-core GPU thread rendering, guys. It's gonna run like sputter, bro. It's gonna be smooth. All right, they're lying to you, all right? After Effects Adobe, this program runs like piss, all right, guys? So how can we make the piss run faster? Well, there are a few things you can do so the first thing you can do is go to edit preferences memory and performance and then once you're in memory and performance you just want to allow more ram to be allocated to after effects so as you can see ram available is right here now if you make this lower you're gonna have more ram available for these programs however don't go too low or else your windows might blue screen or some other stupid stuff might happen so i have 32 gigabytes of ram and i have 26 allocated to this stupid program so yeah you can also make proxies of your clips and this is something I rarely ever do, but it's essentially getting a really bad basic draft quality of a clip and then using that to edit. And then when you render it, you're not going to render that bad clip. You're going to render the good, pristine clip. It's kind of a long process. I might make a whole video on it in the future, or we can just look it up like a After Effects proxy tutorial. However, it is pretty time consuming, so I pretty much never do it. Another thing you can do, which is something that not a lot of people know about and is pretty small, if you have the waveform open so let's say you got a bunch of audio clips you got your background music if you have the waveform open i don't know why this thing is just so laggy all right so all you gotta do close that shit all right i mean it kind of makes sense since it has to generate like an actual visualization of the audio so if you got a ton of audio clips just make sure you don't have the waveform open or if you do need the waveform open just add markers on the clip using the asterisk key so if i go here here these are all the beats of the video so we're just gonna add beats and yeah Another thing you can do to speed up the workflow, which I already talked about, is adding RSMB as the very last thing because of how laggy that is. Also, if you're editing with a lot of laggy effects, there's not a whole lot you can do other than just hide the effect until you render it. But some examples of some really laggy effects are RSMB, Deep Glow, Twixter, Trap Code, and Camera Lens Blur. Those are the only effects that come to my mind right away. But I'm sure there's a bunch of other laggier effects, but those effects that I just named are extremely laggy. So yeah, they're pretty much going to 
slow down your program. And with all of that out of the way, guys, your editing skills have now improved by a billion. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, guys. I make videos on editing and all sorts of other cool stuff. My Instagram, Twitter, and Discord are all in the description down below if you want to stay up to date with some more content I make. And my editing pack is in the description down below as well, too. So if you want to buy my presets, project files, or just a bunch of other cool stuff, be sure to check it out. Your support truly does mean the world to me. But with all that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one, boys. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. I got bribes in Atlanta, just to go be in the family. Credit cards in the scammers, hitting the licks in the band. Legacies, family, way and see, look like a panda. Going out like a Montana, honey killers on the hands. Legacies, family, way and see, family.